So Father, we sound the alarm this morning. We declare to every living thing. We declare to the enemy. We declare to everything that seems to be going against us that I shall live and not die to declare the works of the Lord. We declare the power. We declare healing. We declare deliverance. In the name of Jesus, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Father, we thank you this morning. We've come with the spirit of gratitude. If it wasn't for your goodness, if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, now let Israel say, if it wasn't for the goodness and the mercy and the power, if it wasn't for the glory of God that shows up in my bedroom, that shows up in the sanctuary, that shows up wherever I am, for wherever I am, wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. Thank God for freedom. God, we praise you for freedom this morning. Freedom in the Holy Ghost. Freedom in the spiritual realm. Freedom! Oh! We bind it in the name of Jesus. COVID can't bind me. Sickness can't bind me. Diseases can't bind me. Oh, but I'm free. I'm free because of the blood washed, because of the blood stain, because of Calvary, because of the grave. Full fresh on every singer, full fresh on every praiser, in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you. God, we praise you. God, we lift you up. We lift you up above the moon, above the stars. We lift you up in this place. We expect to be healed. We expect to be delivered. We expect to be set free in the name of Jesus. And God, we will give you the glory as our children receive the Holy Ghost. We'll give you the glory and all of the honor. It's in the precious, miraculous, victorious name of Jesus Christ. And we say, Amen. Come on, wherever you are, wherever you are, wherever you are, you owe God a praise right now. Why don't you forget about the trouble? Why don't you forget about your cares? Why don't you forget about what you don't have? Why don't you forget about what they said to you? Why don't you forget about how you were raised? And open your mouth and give God the glory for what you have. What do you have? I've got the Holy Ghost! Whoa! We want to welcome you to another experience in the presence of the Lord. Wherever you are virtually and us that have gathered today, that we believe that God is making an impact in the kingdom through the people of God for such a time as this. And we give him all of the praise and the glory. We want to thank you all of our family members, all of our friends and loved ones, and for everyone that has tuned in this morning. We want to thank you for joining us as we've come for one purpose only. We are expecting a miracle from God and we're not going to leave this stance until we get what we came for. So if you're in your living room, if you're in your bedroom, it doesn't matter. The God that we serve is omnipresent. He can be with me and you at the same time. Come on, what a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve and we give him the glory. Take those Bibles wherever you are. 
our Old Testament. We will be in the book of 2 Kings, the sixth chapter. And we will be reading from verses 11 through 17. And then our New Testament is coming from the book of 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter. And we will be reading from verses 15 through verse 18. And before we read, we just want to acknowledge the presence of our bishop with us. We greet our bishop, amen, in the name of Jesus Christ, our leader, our man of God. And certainly to Pastor Fields, we greet her in Jesus' name, amen. To all of the deacons and to all of our leaders and friends, musicians and singers, we greet you in Jesus' precious name. Second Kings, six, the sixth chapter, beginning at verse 11. Let's read together. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? And one of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel. Telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. Therefore sent he thither horses and chariots, and a great host, and they came by night and compassed the city about. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth, behold, an host compassed the city, both with horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, Alas, my master, how shall we do? And he answered, Fear not, for they that be with us are more than they that be with them. And Elisha prayed, and the Lord said, and Elisha prayed and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the eyes of the young man, and he saw. And behold, the mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And when they came down to, to him, Elisha prayed unto the Lord and said, Smite these people, I pray thee, with blindness. And he smote them with blindness according to the word of Elisha. Somebody say hallelujah. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians 4, verses 15 through 18. Let us begin. For all things are for your sakes, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Somebody give God a praise for his word. We thank and praise God for his word. Let us recite our mission statement. Amen. We are Timbro Churches International, commissioned to renew lives by reaching and restoring, teaching and transforming, equipping and empowering people, which means we reach out to attract the lost and unchurched for salvation first, then teach and train them to serve in ministry and to change the world for praise Jesus the Lord, Christ. Everyone. Come on, let's praise the Lord, everyone. Do you know you serve a mighty God? Do you know you serve a mighty God who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all you can ever ask or think? The word of the Lord says in 1 Corinthians that I hasn't seen nor ear heard, neither have it entered into the heart of man what God has in store to them who love him. If you're ready to see the things that the Lord has in store for you and you truly love the Lord, someone just say, I'm getting ready to see something I've never seen. I'm waiting for the things that the Lord has planned for us. Someone say, I'm getting ready, oh yeah, to see something I've never seen, yeah. We all know what song says.
like the rushing of a mighty wind, like the rushing of a mighty wind, come and fill our hearts.
Somebody ought to go ahead and praise him. Somebody ought to go ahead and praise him. Somebody ought to go ahead and praise the name of the Lord. In the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians, let's go to the word. In the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians, I want to perhaps cause us to think about a word that's going to transition us into a completely new environment of God. And as we bring this year, the year of the Lord, 2020, to a close, we want to make sure that we leave out of this year uh, impacted and prepared for whatever God's going to do next. And I thought as I prayed about this transitional time, even as we go through the end of the year, let me read, it, let me read for you the, the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians as we believe God for what he's going to do for us. And right about verse 16, for which cause we faint not, but though our outward man perish, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, which is but for a moment, worketh for us a more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. While we look not at the things which are seen, but the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Read 18 with me, will you? While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Before you take your seat, I have been trying to figure out positionally where we need to be as believers as we transit into another year but with 2 Corinthians 4 18 in mind we have a we do have a condition we do smile at someone tell them you do have a condition you do now tell them this I have a nervous expectation somebody didn't get that smile at someone and tell them I have a nervous expectation. Can we talk about that for a minute? Will you please be seated in the power of the Lord? I would open by sharing no matter how much you walk with this God. It amazes me how much you can still walk in a certain level of darkness or a certain level of anonymity. No matter how professed we feel that we are, all of us still have to process things even though we're walking with God, it does not exempt us from having to deal with 
the things that come to disturb our thinking and disturb that place that we have with God. And so if we spend so much time dealing with this thing about doubt, it must be in some way be the will of God being developed through it. And that doubt does not automatically think or automatically mean that I'm disconnected from God the Father. It doesn't mean that. It simply means that through my doubt, God could be yet developing something which is going to help me and fortify me on the other side of this. And so we can walk with him and all of us have relationship at some level with God. But it, it's, a, it's amazing to me how much time we still work with or deal with what I believe what it is that disturbs me about what I believe. So one of the things, even as this year has taught us, uh, that we have to learn how to be okay with, with doubt invading our mind. Uh, this coronavirus situation came in unexpectedly. And somehow, could it be that the Lord is teaching us that we're going to have to deal with uncertain, sudden things that we cannot be taken by surprise when unusual things begin to happen. Uh, if the ancestral church was here, uh, my father would say it's signs of the times that we are dealing with extraordinary, unheard of situations. But yet, you and I have to be okay with whatever invades our space because it does not mean that God is still not incredible it just means in our earthly situation, we have to be assured that God is developing something in us that we have to be okay with it. And I'm not trying to minimize your pain, but you, you have to be okay because it's going to be okay. And when you understand that from the standpoint of relationship, then we can get our minds around this. So it does not mean that we are faithless or without conviction. It doesn't mean that we're without vision. But what it perhaps means is that the days of my doubt, although they, they highlight my weakness, it has not and will not destroy my unrevealed strength, which means that doubt comes very quickly. Faith we have to fight for. And sometimes if we're dealing with an earthly experience, just because I might be expressing one situation, it does not mean that I don't have gifting that has not yet been revealed. All of us walk around here with unrevealed power, unrevealed, uh, unrevealed manifestation. And so don't cry for me when I'm going through. My stuff has not been revealed yet. Oh, but it's coming. It's coming. I'm trying to find my seven praises now. It's coming. It's unrevealed, but it's coming. And could it be God has to lower the hedge and let something in like a global vibe? For me to rely on for my re unrevealed strength to be revealed. Smile at somebody. Just tell them you got it. You got it. Uh, yeah, you got strength that we haven't seen yet. You've got uh, ingenuity we haven't seen yet. And could it be you haven't, you haven't stumbled across the right kind of fight that reveals in you the kind of man or woman of God you really are. Somebody lift your hand and say unrevealed strength. Oh, God's got it. And so when things happen that we don't expect, then God simply reveals the unrevealed stuff that we didn't think that we had. Because we, we all have had those days and, and we've had good days and we're still here. We've had a 2020 and we're still here. And I'm still convinced. Are you still convinced with me that better's on the way? That oftentimes when we look at the worst, it simply means that God is setting up something greater for us. And so we have to borrow now the thinking of Isaiah when in his day and time, now I'm not sure if Isaiah was looking at a pandemic, but he was looking at something serious. And Isaiah looked at it, stared at it, and still declared, but, I, but behold, God said, in the midst of what you're going through, I'm still preparing to do a new thing. I'm still prepared to do what God has called. I'm still prepared. Anybody ready for God to do it? And so we have to, we have to subscribe to the word of the Lord. And, and here's what Ecclesiastes teaches us. Better is the end of a thing than the beginning. And so if you think that I'm out because of my beginning, hold on to my end. Uh, I feel the ancestral church coming in here. The race is not given to the swift. Don't hear nobody yet. Uh, and the, the race is not given to the swift, the battle not to the strong. But how many know you, you just have to endure? 
You've just got to endure because better is the end of a thing than the beginning if you believe somebody say amen. And so Paul begins to treat this issue, this issue of doubt and the fluctuation of doubt between what I, what I see and what I behold. And he addresses something quite similar in this conversation with the thinkers in Corinth. And he, he purposely deals with, with how the believer must be fixated on something greater than doubt. The issue is, whatever you look at, whatever you, whatever you focus on is going to be your conclusion. And so Paul says, I've got to learn how to be fixated on something other than it. If you ever want to walk with God in true revelation, whatever is happening to you, deny it and look for something greater. Whatever is emotionally stressing you, forget that, look away from that and get fixated on everything but what is happening to you. And he wants the, the, he wants the brethren to understand that there is a level that all of us must get to. It's not passive now. Passion is never passive. Uh, energy is never passive. When I'm, when I'm hungry and thirsty for a thing, it's never passive. 42 Psalms would encourage us here as the heart panteth after the water brook. Don't hear faith yet. So panteth my soul after the O God. The reason why you have survived is because your panting was, get, was greater than the thing that was raging against you. And so your level has got to come up. And Paul says you've got to advance this now to the level of obsession. In other words, you've got to be so fixated on what God's getting ready to do, you will deny whatever you see and believe that God is going to bring it to pass. I know it's real, but it's not here to stay. I wonder, am I talking to anybody yet? I'm looking at all kinds of devastation, but thank God it's not here to stay because we have to hold on to something and become almost obsessed with it so that we can exclusively attach ourselves to faith. In other words, this, this test is just a test for you. It is not a test of your money. It's not a test of your ingenuity. It's not a test of your creativity. It's a test of your faith. And what you've got to let the enemy know is that I refuse to let go of everything that God promised just because I'm dealing with some nervousness of what it is that I can see. I refuse to be upset even though I should be. And if you want to make the enemy mad, be pleasant when you ought to be crying. If you ever want to, if you ever want to give someone a reason uh, to back off you, just when walk in here with nothing and give God every praise you can find. Because I'm going to do the opposite of what the enemy expects. In other words, this year from March till now, the enemy expected for you to give up on God. Uh, but the devil is a liar. I'm still here because I've learned how to fixate myself on my faith and become exclusively attached to what God's getting ready to do in spite of what's happening right now. Storms there are, disappointment there are, and untold things there are, but I'm so in love with where I'm going, I could care less what's getting ready to happen to me. Am I talking to anybody yet? When you know you have a future, you smile at your past. When you know that God is greater than what you just went through yesterday you smile at your past when you know that God's able to cause something you can't see to turn around and bless you you let folk take from you over here because God's getting ready to open the door over here and then I can look at everything I'm going through and I'm, I'm exclusively attacked is anybody hearing this I'm so stuck on praise that you can't get me off it I'm so stuck on worship that even when I lose my mind the last I'm telling Telling God, the last thing I want to lose is my praise. Take my house, I'll still praise him. Take my car, I'll still praise him. Take my job, I'll still praise him. Because the last thing, if when before I close my eyes and cross over to the other side, let them tell them for me that I was praising the name of my God. Because praise brought me in and I'm going out in praise. Energize the worshiper next to you. Smile at them, say, energize your praise. It will bring bring you to a place you've never seen before. Paul then wants the Corinth church to get this in their thinking. So now in the Greek, this thing is, is rendered sterizo, meaning to secure and firmly establish.
established uh, for one purpose, to eliminate vacillation. Uh, I know that's a fancy way of saying uh, you got to settle down. Uh, you want God to get you so calm that even the people that usually see you upset think something wrong with you. Uh, because usually you kirk out, lose your mind, want to fuss and cuss everybody out, and they think something wrong with you because you've got so much peace over your life. Uh, because God is eliminating the vacillation. So I don't have to be concerned about what tomorrow's bringing. I'm settled in my today. I can't praise him for what happened yesterday. I can't praise him for what's going to happen tomorrow. But one thing I can do, I can praise him for what I'm getting ready to receive right now. Somebody lift your hand and holler today. Today. I don't care what tomorrow looks like. I know God will be there when I get there. But because the Lord has terezo in my life, because he has secured and firmly established me, and because he has eliminated vacillation, somebody going to think you're on medication, you're so cool. Somebody going to think that you got things worked out, no trouble still there. But can I borrow this from the ancestral church? They would say there's a deep settled peace in my soul. Things are going crazy, but I'm moving because I might be nervous, but I will still give hope to God because God is bringing it to pass. So the feeling then of being out of control in my walk is really when God shifts me from what I see to what I believe. If you give me a minute here, I'll be gone. What God wants you then to do is to walk by the parameters of faith and not be so succumb to the things that you can see because if we're going to really walk with God we're going to have to deal with God developing and not things developed this is why my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness the enemy thought I would have lost it by now but he had no idea what I was built on he looked at my structure and it was weak he looked at the building and it would look like it was falling down. He looked at the things that I built and thought that everything would be messed up. But he forgot about the promises of Matthew 16 when Jesus through Peter revealed that upon this rock I don't hear faithful people yet. Give a neighbor air high five says upon this rock I'm not going to lose my mind because I'm built on something greater. Now the storm may blow me and I may vacillate from one side to the other but I'm built upon the rock. Listen to the promise in Matthew 16 and I'm gone. Jesus said upon this rock I will build my church but listen to the full promise. Sometimes we shout over the A clause. You got to wait for the B clause. The A clause is upon this rock I build my church and this is what he says this is the hope of the church smile at somebody tell him this is where my hope comes in he said I'm the gates of hell shall not prevail against me can I help you understand that because if you don't understand the promise of God whenever something happens you believe that God was not true to his promise what he said was the gates of hell what he didn't say what he did say I'm going to tell you what he did say but what he didn't say he didn't say yeah, that the gates of hell would not try he didn't say that this year you would not have trouble I need seven praises now he didn't say that I'm not going to test you on every side he didn't say that brethren will turn against you and people will do all manner of evil again he didn't say that but what he did say was that upon this rock I will build my church and the gates of hell shall try. 
Did you get it now? Hell tried you this year. Hell tried to drive you out of your mind. Hell tried to turn you upside down. But I've got a message for hell. You did not survive. You did not prevail. And what you ought to do is tell hell to go back to the place it originated from. Because after the storm is over, I'm still going to be here. Because I've got Sturezo in my life. And I'm built upon the rock that is Christ. If it wasn't for Jesus, I wish I could talk now. If it was not for Jesus, PJ, we might as well have a little church. Look at somebody tell him if it had not been for Jesus, then I don't know if I would have survived this long. If it was not for Jesus, I thought I had faithful people in here. If it was not for Jesus, then I would not understand what was happening. But because of Jesus, I didn't come here to impress you. I went through hell this year. But because of Jesus, I can walk into this room when it looks like the world is against me. And I can look at what I can't see and declare it's on the way. Somebody lift your hands and declare it's on the way. I don't see it yet, but it's coming. I don't have it in my account yet, but it's coming. The house he promised me is not here, but it's coming. Because I have an assurance that even on my worst day, God's still going to settle me down. Can somebody glorify him right here? Because he's eliminating my vacillation. He's giving me hope for tomorrow. And because my worst days, sometimes it feels like my life is a pendulum I got to close here it swings one way on Monday it swings another way on Tuesday it swings another day on Thursday but what the enemy doesn't know is in between the left and the right is the center of the will of God and I might be confused over here but after the storm is over I wish I had faith in the room. He's the center of my joy. Give your neighbor a high five. Give him an air high five. Don't touch nobody yet. These are coronavirus conditions. Give your neighbor air high five. And say, stay in the center. Your mind is over here. And your situation's over there. And sometimes it feel like I'm going to lose my mind. But I'm going to stay in the center. You can't move me when I'm in the center of his will. Lift your hands to God and say, Lord, keep me in the center. The greatest place you'll ever be is in the secret place of the most high God. He's going to keep you there. I've got to go here. Give me a minute in the text. Paul says, while you look not at the things which are seen but the things which are not seen because what I see today it won't be here tomorrow don't you know God can do that God said to Israel when they passed through the Red Sea he said don't worry about it smile at your neighbor tell them don't worry about it the trouble you saw this year you not going to see next year the pain you saw this year you're not going to see next year the heartache you saw this year you're not going to see next year because God is bringing you through it's only temporary somebody lift your hand and say it's only temporary I'm unemployed it's temporary don't have a home it's temporary don't have a job it's temporary so I'm not hooking my faith on what's in transition can I preach 
you like I feel. Paul says it's temporal. It's transitory. It's transitory. It's phantasmal. It's passing. It's moving from level. Can't put my hand on it. Can't put my hand on my money. Can't put my hand on my friends because they're temporal. But God's getting ready to give you nervous expectation which means I don't know where it's coming from but I'm excited I'm excited about what God is going to do for me give somebody a high five tell them I'm nervous but I'm hopeful I'm nervous but I'm grateful I'm nervous but I'm on my way because I have nervous expectation one day I'm up the next day I'm down but the devil is a liar what I can't see is get ready bless me what I can't see it's on the way I got to close but give your neighbor a high five tell him it's on the way what you've been praying for you didn't get it this year but God said it was here but it was unseen what I showed you this year is all that the enemy could do what I showed you this year was what you could handle y'all don't hear what I'm saying what I showed you this year is how strong you could be what I showed you this year is how much you could overcome what I showed you this year was the joy you could have but what I'm getting ready to show you is the power you didn't think you had is the praise you didn't think you could give is the worship you didn't know you had I'm showing you the unseen God is I got nervous so when you see me in worship when you see me and I'm twitching in my prayer when you see me and I'm twitching in my seat all it means is I've got nervous expectation sometimes you can't praise sometimes you can't worship you'll sit in your seat and do like the mothers the mothers would sit and just rock they just rock in their seat it looked like they were losing their mind but mother say honey I've got nervous expectation I see something coming and I can't wait for it to be revealed I see my trouble you see my trial but what you don't see is that he's bringing me to a new level so I've got nervous expectation I'm nervous but I'm still hopeful that God will bring it to pass I got to go here but smile at your neighbor and say God will God will God will bring it to pass I can't see it but I'll praise I'll praise him I got to close you praise God because he has the ability next year let me tell you what I want to do next year I'm not going Praise him. Look at your neighbor and say, don't praise him next year. This year, you praise him. But next year, I'm not going to praise him because I praise him for he has the ability to bring it to pass. Then I worship him because there's nobody like him. But 2021 is going to be a year of thanksgiving when I give give him thanks is because it's in front of me when I give him thanks it's because he opened the door you praised him for it to come but now that it's here I've got nervous expectation I'll thank him I'll thank him I'll thank him because I've got that somebody hold 
of nervous. I'm nervous, but he's going to do it. I'm nervous. I'm going to sign. Can I help y'all? I'm getting ready to sign a mortgage. I'm nervous, but I expect God to pay this for me. I expect God. I don't have the salary. I'm nervous, but I'm hopeful. Nervous, but excited. Nervous, but it's coming to pass. He will. He will. Somebody clap your hands and tell the devil I'm nervous, but I have expectation. That's it. Somebody give God the greatest praise. I got to close. I got to close. Which means that everything that God's getting ready to do for you, you're going to be nervous before you sign it. But don't let your nerves destroy your faith. Because Paul says in Romans 7 that with my flesh I serve the law of sin. But in my mind I serve the law of God. Never let the law of sin override the law of God. You're getting ready to sign something big this year. And everybody around you will tell you you can't afford it. I remember when Pastor and I bought our very first home. I knew credit was jacked up. I knew. In fact, I walked into the, I walked into the dealership with a ream of paper. 500 sheets of paper. And the man said, what, what, what do you need this for? I said, you're going to need that much paper to run my credit. You're going to see everything I've ever done. And all the way up to the close, I'm telling you what I know. In my heart, I was looking for something to happen. To destroy my opportunity. See, I, I was nervous about the process. But I'll never forget what that closing agent said. And I share this with you in the name of Jesus. The man said to me, Mr. Edmund, by the time you get to this table, we're not trying to keep you out. Y'all don't hear it? In other words, if you can make it this far, we're not trying to find a reason to keep you out. We're trying to find every reason to bring you into the house. And I'm telling you, because you made it to December 2020, God said, because you made it this far, oh, I'm going to bring you in in 2021. Somebody open your mouth and praise the God that's getting ready to bring you in. So I signed it. I signed it. I was nervous, but I had expectations. And what the Lord reminded me this morning, and I've, came to, I've come to tell all of you, you're going to be nervous about everything that God puts in your path. Because it's unseen. We see the trouble. Uh, the, the words of Mother, Mother Clementine Wright. She was a mother uh, in our church in Bristol. And, and I just heard her words. She would always recite the words of this hymn. That, that doubt sees the obstacle, but faith sees the way. I wish you would get that. That your sight will always see the problem. Your faith will always push you in spite of it. What are you going to do? Lift your hands. I'm praying. Father, in Jesus' name, someone is closing this year with nervous expectation. I saw what the, I saw what the pandemic did to my family. I saw what it did to my loved ones. I saw what it did to my church. I saw what it did to my job. I saw what it did to everything. But God says, stop looking. While we look not, do you get it now? While we look not at the things which are seen. Those things are transitory. They're phantasmal. They are moving. But God says, I'm going to settle you in 2020. I'm settling you. In other words, I'm going to minimize the nervousness and increase your expectation. That you'll look back at 2020 and say, this is why I had to go through that. Because God wanted me to reach for something greater than what I was. Father, I pray right now in the great name of the Lord Jesus. I'm praying for somebody right now.
that says, Lord, what am I looking for? I, I can't wait to get out of this year. But don't get out of this year without a plan for what you're going to do, do differently in the year to come. And so, Father, why we look not at the things which are seen. Somebody needs strength right now. Come on, reach up that hand to God. Somebody needs strength right now. God wanted to remind you today. Be nervous, but still expect me to do it. Be concerned, but still expect me to do it. Be upset, but still expect me to do it. Pray now, now for somebody. The Lord said, I sought specifically in the Spirit of God. The Lord says, I'm going to cause you to sign something. You'll get ready to sign something. But know that what I, I'm, I'm revealing the resources that are not seen yet. You're looking at the resources you have now. God, maybe I'm preaching to myself. Stop looking at the resources you see now. Those are seen. God says, I've got some other sources for you that are unseen. But I need you to believe God. I pray now for healing in the body. For our family members that need to be healed. God, I give you all grace and glory now in the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, we believe and pray for everything that you promised you were going to do. We give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name, everybody clap your hands and give God the greatest praise. Give the greatest praise. Give the greatest praise. Glory to God. Can you join me by giving God the praise for his word today? Come on, I've got nervous expectation. Glory. Can we take a moment and open our mouths? I know we're going to have to leave, but Lord, you're worthy of all praise. And we give God the praise for what he has done and what he has spoken over our lives today. Come on, anybody have nervous expectation? I know he's getting ready to do it. I know he's getting ready to do Come on, I know he's getting ready to do it. Because we're seated with Christ in heavenly places. And we thank God that we have that spiritual authority that we can speak it and believe according to his will and according to his word that it shall come to pass. Glory to God. It's giving back time. Amen. Wherever you are, there are a few ways that you can give today to Timbrell Church. You can give by calling the church at 301-955-01, I'm sorry, 6192. That's 301-955-6192 if you would like to call and give your gift over the phone. Also, you can mail a check or money order to Timbro Church at P.O. Box 394, Bowie, Maryland, 20719. Also, by Cash App. If you're searching for us, it's at Timbrell Church, at Timbrell Church. Also, by downloading the app, Givelify, and you also can find us at Timbrell Church. What a mighty experience that we've had on today. Amen. And we're trusting and believing God that all of our family, our partners, our guests, our friends, come on, pick up your phones, do whatever you can, and let's be a blessing, amen, to the people of God. We thank God for what he has done, and we trust him every step of the way. Anybody here trust him for your home? Come on, we're going to trust him for the house of God, amen, that he's able to do it. All right, we're getting ready to leave this place. Amen. And we're going to recite our departing statement. Join me. I've been blessed to be a blessing. I leave this service for one purpose only, to serve my community, to grow in grace and the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory both now and forever. Go and change the world for Jesus Christ. Whoa.